In this section, we discuss reflective and co-reflective adjoint situations. In a joint situation, FG is reflective if and only if the co-unit is an isomorphism. And by the previous section, we saw this is equivalent to G being full and faithful. In this case, we say F is a reflector for G. Dually, FG is co-reflective if and only if the unit is an isomorphism, if and only if F is full and faithful. And say G is a co-reflector for F. Reflective, respectively co-reflective joint situations are particularly well behaved with respect to limit and co-limit constructions in the co-domain, respectively domain categories. Precisely, one, let FG be reflective and D a diagram in A, then A, the cone GPI on GD is the limit of GD if and only if the cone PI on D is the limit of D, and B, the co-cone SI on GD is the co-limit of GD implies the co-cone FSI epsilon inverse DI on D is the co-limit of D, and two is just the dual statements. To prove 1A in the reverse direction, we have G is a joint and therefore preserves limits, so GPI is the limit of GD. In the forward direction, we let QI be a cone on D. Functors preserve cones, so then GQI is a cone on GD. So by the universal mapping property of GL, we have a unique factorization H from GA to GL, such that GPI H is equal to GQI for each I. But G is full, so H is equal to GK for some amorphism K, and G is faithful, so K is unique. And also, since G is faithful, we have GPIK is equal to GQI implies PIK is equal to QI for each I. So we have a unique factorization of the cone QI through the cone PI. Therefore, the cone PI from L to DI is the limit of D. For B, let RI be a co-cone on D. Then GRI is a co-cone on GD. So by the universal mapping property of K, there exists a unique factorization H from K to GA such that HSI is equal to GRI for each I. Consider the following commuting diagram, where the top square commutes since epsilon is a natural isomorphism, and the bottom triangle commutes since the green triangle on the left commutes and functors preserve commuting diagrams. Therefore, RI is equal to epsilon A F H F S I epsilon inverse DI for each I. So we have a factorization. But since epsilon A is an isomorphism and F preserves co-limits, epsilon A F H is the unique factorization. Therefore, the co-cone F S I epsilon inverse DI is the co-limit of D. Two is just the dual proof, and so we are done. As a corollary, we have 1 if FG is reflective and B is complete or finitely complete, respectively co-complete or finitely co-complete, then A is complete or finitely complete, respectively co-complete or finitely co-complete. And 2 is just the dual for co-reflective adjoint situations. And the proof is immediate.